Uh, so uh, I'm going to talking about uh, entanglement assisted quantum LDPC codes and their relation to uh, combinatorial design. And this is a joint work with uh, Professor Bradamar Sanchez. I think he's staying somewhere there. And uh, <coughs> uh, our ultimate goal is to construct quantum uh, error correcting codes which have a uh, very good error correcting performance and we want to construct quantum codes for uh, various range of uh, parameters so various length and various rates and so on and uh, we want to decode them very very efficiently and when we construct them uh, <coughs> we want to uh, have explicit constructions so to do that uh, uh, to achieve these, uh, at least to try to achieve these, these goals, uh, we use three uh, tools. One is uh, the so-called entanglement assisted stabilizer formalist, which is a generalization of uh, uh, standard stabilizer formalist. And we apply it to a certain classical codes called L load and C parity check code, uh, LDPC code for short. And uh, uh, we see some relation between them, uh, <coughs> which is related to combinatorial design theory. And, and if you're not familiar with uh, design theory, uh, here's a definition of a pairwise balanced design, PBD for short, of parameters B, K, and one, and which is an uh, ordered pair of <coughs> uh, finite sets V, uh, where V is a finite set called a point, and V is just a family of subsets of V, uh, such that uh, each unordered pair of distinct points is contained in exactly one block. And so, <coughs> uh, PBD is said to be odd replicate if each point uh, appears exactly one uh, odd number of blocks. And these are uh, very fundamental uh, combinatorial, combinatorial objects and uh, classical examples uh, come from, for example, finite geometry, such as uh, projective space and affine space and so on. And uh, <coughs> uh, PBDs and related uh, combinatorial designs uh, have been studied for a long, long time. I think it's uh, since the 19th century. So we all have a lot of mathematical tool tools to study them. And uh, to uh, at least try to achieve these goals, we use entanglement assisted stabilizer formalist and uh, use the uh, LDPC codes. And what are LDPC codes? And uh, well, they are, I think a lot of people here are already familiar with them, but uh, LDPC codes are just a special kind of linear code which can be decoded very efficiently by using a certain very uh, efficient uh, suboptimal code. And the point is that uh, LDPC codes are cap uh, capacity approaching codes at least in the classical domain. So uh, they, if you construct L LDPC code carefully, uh, you can almost achieve the channel limit. And uh, you can also decode those codes efficiently in linear time, actually. <coughs> and because uh, low density parity check codes are just linear codes, they can be represented as uh, um, bipartite graphs called Tana graphs. And it is known that uh, if we want to uh, get better error correcting performance, you need, uh, it is better to have graphs of the Turner graphs uh, larger than or equal to six. So basically we want to avoid the four cycles and the bipartite uh, representation. So uh, we use low density parity to check codes as an ingredient of uh, stabilizer codes. And uh, the normal uh, standard stabilizer formalism uh, requires the so-called symplectic orthogonality uh, conditions. And so stabilizer generators must commute. And so 
while we can employ um, classical linear codes in a direct way, but uh, we can, uh, the range of the classical code we can take advantage of is limited. But the, uh, the generalized version of a stabilizer formalism uh, can remove the, this uh, orthogonal, orthogonal condition uh, by assuming that we can share, uh, <coughs> we can pre-share a, a tiny amount of entanglement. So the sender and the receiver share edits. And by, uh, by this assumption, uh, we can take advantage of any uh, binary or quaternary linear code. And today, uh, we only consider CSS construction, and uh, especially the case when we use the exact same code uh, for correcting bit flipped and phase errors. So the uh, check matrix uh, must look like this, H and H, H is the uh, parity check matrix of the ingredient LDPC code. And in this case, if we have a classical linear code of parameters N, K, D, then uh, the, we can always get um, L quantum LDPC codes of length N and dimension 2K minus N plus C. And C is the rank of Parity check matrix times its its transpose, and this C uh, happens to be exactly the same as the amount of pre-shared entanglement. Uh, that means uh, the which is the required number of EBIT to make a quantum. And because uh, the quantum LDPC code uses the same kind of uh, decoder, we want them to have large girth. And also, um, using a bunch of EBIT may not be practical, so uh, we generally want to use only a small number of EBIT. So uh, in this talk, we only consider the case when the LBC codes consume only one EBIT, which is the smallest as possible, and with the largest possible growth. So uh, what uh, we proved is that uh, <coughs> uh, such uh, LDPC codes uh, consuming only one EBIT with uh, the largest possible goals are actually equivalent to fundamental combinatorial designs called replicate PBDs. And especially if the ingredient LDPC codes uh, are regular, which means the parity check matrices are of constant uh, column weight and the constant row weight, then uh, they are equivalent to the so-called Steiner tube design. And if you are familiar with uh, combinatorial design theory, then it's just uh, S2KV with uh, V minus one over K minus one being odd. And so uh, what we actually proved is that uh, the ingredient uh, parity check matrix, the classical parity check matrix, must be an incidence matrix of uh, PPD with index one and the uh, other replication number. So uh, by this equivalence, we can uh, we now characterize the uh, LDPC code consuming only one EBIT. So we can now uh, derive uh, certain bounds on the minimum distance and dimensions and growth and what have you. And uh, we can also give a necessary and sufficient condition for their existence uh, in, in many cases. And we can also uh, obtain a bunch of explicit constructions. So uh, these are some of the results we obtained so far, and uh, we, I just uh, copied and pasted uh, these results from um, uh, our manuscript. And uh, for example, well, the, the theorem on the, on the top says that uh, quantum LDPC codes, which consume only one A bit, and <coughs> it's of length N, and has the largest possible growth, 
and in some constant weight, constant column weight mu, uh, exists only when this uh, number uh, happens to be an odd integer. And this condition is actually asymptotically uh, sufficient, which means if uh, the length is large enough, then we can always construct uh, entanglement assisted quantum LAPC codes consuming only one qubit as long as, long as this number is an uh, odd integer. And we can, of course, uh, extend this result to an uh, irregular case, which means uh, non constant uh, column weight or row weight. And uh, this is an example of a bound on the dimension of um, quantum LAPC codes uh, uh, consuming, consuming only one qubit. And uh, typically, entanglement assisted uh, quantum LAPC codes uh, consuming only one qubit have a very large weights. So very large dimension. So if you want to construct a uh, high rate code, then this is very good news. But, oh, okay. okay. So, uh, but uh, this may not be good news if you want to construct um, codes with a huge minimum distance. And uh, so this is uh, <coughs> examples of uh, our simulation results over uh, the depolarizing channel. And uh, the guys marked as AG uh, <coughs> are consuming a bunch of qubits. And uh, the guys uh, marked as PG only consume one qubit. And as long as the parameters are quite similar, uh, they behave quite similarly. And so this, uh, this suggests that you may not need a lot of qubits to um, uh, obtain, the, to achieve the, uh, your target block error rate. Oh yeah, th this is better, I think. So uh, we found the equivalence between um, quantum LDC of certain kind and uh, combinatorial designs. And by that uh, equivalence, we, can, uh, we, could, we were able to get a lot of results like that. And uh, so the next question might be uh, if we can characterize the LDPC codes, quantum LDPC codes, which use um, uh, different linear codes for uh, correct change phase errors and bit errors. And another question might be, what if we allow multiple qubits? And how to construct um, quantum LDPC codes in, under the assumption that, for example, um, phase errors are more likely? So uh, we are working on this kind of a problem. And thank you, that's it. Questions? Hi. Um, do you have any idea the encoding circuits for these codes, if you can do them sort of progressively, like Daniel Gottesman was asking for in his talk? Uh, no, we haven't looked into the encoding circuits yet. Okay. Um, the other question I had, if it's okay, um, is if there's noise on that one EBIT, mm -hmm. how is the performance affected? Have you studied that uh, numerically? Uh, numerically? Uh, well... So, uh, is, do, do these simulations account for noise on the EBITs as well? I, th I thought that... No, no okay. well, the EBIT must be uh, error-free, so the uh, EBIT uh, is assumed to, well, uh, sorry, uh, we didn't do noise on EBIT. Right, but I guess I'm asking 
how the perform like would the whole thing just collapse if that EBIT is no good, or, or would it sort of gracefully uh, decline the performance? Oh, uh, that's a good question. But uh, well, we didn't test anything like that. If there are no, I guess. So you said this, but it went by a little quickly. I wanted to ask you to clarify. Uh, what was it in your result that uh, you said it it, uh, it indicated that there it might be hard to find families of codes with high distances? Uh -huh. So what what was that limitation? Uh, the li limitation is that um, if we assume uh, that we only use CSS construction and we use the same quality check matrices for X errors and Z errors. And uh, we also assume that we only consume uh, one EBIT. Then the, the quality check matrices must be a certain kind of combinatorial design. And in that case, the, uh, the dimension K must be within certain range and uh, that kind of uh, LDPC code is known to have very high rate in the classical domain. And because the uh, classical LDPC codes and the quantum LDPC codes pretty much share the same parameters, so we, uh, we can construct uh, low rate codes only when uh, only unlimited parameters. Let's thank the speaker again.